You're probably checking AI news from five different sources every day, trying to keep up with what's actually important. Well, I spent the last 48 hours diving deep into this week's biggest AI announcements, and honestly, I found something that changes everything we thought we knew about how AI is integrating into our daily workflows. OpenAI just dropped a product that could make Chrome obsolete. And that's just the beginning. Welcome back to bitbias.ai, where we do the research, so you don't have to. Join our community of AI enthusiasts. Click the newsletter link in the description for weekly analysis delivered straight to your inbox. So in this video, I'm breaking down the five biggest AI developments that actually matter this week. From AI browsers that understand your screen, to coding assistants that work without your terminal. Plus, I'll show you why one medical AI startup just doubled its value to $6 billion in three months. And what Meta's quietly testing with your phone's camera roll. First up, OpenAI's bold move into the browser wars. And trust me, this one's a game changer. OpenAI's browser revolution. Let's talk about what OpenAI just unleashed. They've launched ChatGPT Atlas, and this isn't just another browser competing with Chrome. This is OpenAI saying, we're done being a chatbot in a separate tab. Here's what makes Atlas different. Imagine browsing the web, and instead of constantly copying and pasting text to ask ChatGPT questions, there's a built-in sidecar chatbot that already understands everything on your screen. Every article you read, every product page you visit, every form you're filling out, Atlas sees it all and can help instantly. No more context switching, no more explaining what you're looking at, it just knows. But here's where it gets really interesting. Atlas doesn't just help you browse. It actually remembers your browsing history intelligently, building a personalized understanding of your online behavior to deliver answers that feel tailored specifically to you. Think about that for a moment. Your browser isn't just showing you websites anymore. It's learning from every click, every search, every page you linger on. Now, if you're on ChatGPT Plus or business tier, wait until you see this. You get access to agent mode, and this is where things go from helpful to absolutely wild. Agent mode can actually perform web tasks for you autonomously. We're talking about filling out forms while you grab coffee, booking appointments without you lifting a finger, even ordering products based on your preferences. The browser becomes less of a tool you use and more of an assistant that works for you. Currently, Atlas is available for macOS users with Windows, iOS, and Android versions in active development. OpenAI isn't positioning this as just another browser option. They're calling it a full productivity environment powered by GPT-5 intelligence. By merging browsing, automation, and conversation into one seamless platform, they're pushing AI directly into the center of our daily digital lives, one tab at a time. The real question is, what does this mean for Chrome, Safari, and Edge? When your browser can think, remember, and act on your behalf, suddenly the old way of browsing feels almost quaint. This isn't just competition. This is evolution. Claude becomes your cloud coder. Speaking of evolution, Anthropic just made a move that changes the entire game for developers. They've launched Claude Code on the web, and this flips the script on how we think about AI coding assistance. Until now, if you wanted AI help with code, you were usually working in your local environment, maybe with GitHub Copilot in your IDE, still doing most of the heavy lifting yourself. Claude Code on the web throws that model out the window. You can now delegate entire programming tasks directly from your browser. No terminal required. No local setup. Just connect your GitHub repository and start assigning jobs. Here's what makes this powerful. Each task runs in its own isolated environment on Anthropic managed cloud infrastructure. That means you can have multiple coding projects running in parallel, all executing simultaneously, all completely separated from each other. Your bug fix on one branch doesn't interfere with your feature development on another. It's like having multiple AI developers working for you at the same time. But wait, here's the part that really caught my attention. You get real-time progress tracking, and more importantly, interactive steering. This isn't just set-it-and-forget-it automation. 
you can actually guide Claude mid-process. If you see it going down the wrong path, you can course correct on the fly. It's collaborative coding, not just automated coding. The beta research preview status means they're still refining the experience, but the implications are already massive. Imagine automating all your routine updates, delegating bug fixes while you focus on architecture, running parallel development streams without spinning up multiple local environments. This transforms Claude from something you chat with about code into an actual coding collaborator that executes real work. And because everything runs in the cloud on Anthropic's infrastructure, there's built-in speed and safety. Perfect for teams handling sensitive repositories or managing multiple branches across different projects. The security isolation means you're not exposing your entire code base just to get AI assistance on one feature. This is Anthropic's vision becoming clear. They're not just building a smarter chatbot. They're building an AI engineer that bridges the gap between human intent and working code. You describe what you want, Claude builds it, and you steer the outcome. The future of software development might look a lot more like management and a lot less like typing. The medical AI unicorn you need to know now. Let's talk about something that's happening in healthcare that honestly blew my mind when I saw the numbers. Open Evidence, which people are calling the chat GPT for doctors, just hit a $6 billion valuation. Yes, billion with a B. And here's the kicker. They doubled that valuation in just three months after raising $200 million in new funding. So what exactly is open evidence and why is it growing this fast? Here's the thing. When doctors need information, they can't just Google it and hope for the best. They need trusted, peer-reviewed, evidence-based sources. Open evidence built their entire platform on exactly that pulling from authoritative medical journals like JAMA and the New England Journal of Medicine. It's not scraping random medical blogs. It's trained on the gold standard of medical literature. The numbers tell the story. Since July, the platform has exploded to 15 million monthly consultations. That's 15 million times per month that doctors are turning to this AI for fast, reliable answers during actual patient care. Think about what that means. In exam rooms, in ERs, during consultations, physicians are using this tool to summarize research, interpret symptoms, and reference peer-reviewed data in seconds instead of minutes or hours. This is reshaping medical workflows in real time. When a doctor encounters an unusual symptom presentation or needs to verify the latest treatment protocol, they're not spending 20 minutes digging through journals anymore. They're getting instant, verified information that helps them make better decisions faster. The platform can surface relevant studies, highlight contradicting research, and present treatment options all backed by rigorous clinical data. But here's what makes open evidence different from other medical AI attempts. Accuracy and accountability. The medical field cannot afford hallucinations or made-up citations. Open Evidence's commitment to sourcing only from verified, peer-reviewed literature means doctors can actually trust what they're seeing. That trust is what's driving adoption, and that adoption is what's driving this insane valuation. We're watching the birth of safe, accountable medical AI that's actually being used in practice, not just talked about in conferences. The promise here is making clinical expertise more accessible without sacrificing data integrity. When AI can help a rural doctor access the same depth of knowledge as a specialist at a major medical center, that's not just a business opportunity. That's potentially life-changing for patients everywhere. Meta wants to scan your camera roll. Okay, this next one is interesting, and it's definitely going to make some people uncomfortable. Meta is quietly testing a new feature that could fundamentally change how we share memories on Facebook. And honestly, the privacy implications here are wild. Here's what's happening. Facebook is rolling out an opt-in feature that allows Meta's AI to scan your phone's camera roll and suggest photos that it thinks are worth sharing. Birthday parties, vacations, graduations, basically any moment the AI detects as socially relevant. The idea is that you've got thousands of photos buried in your phone, and Meta's AI wants to surface the ones that deserve a spotlight. Now, Meta is being very careful with their messaging here. They're emphasizing that this is opt-in only, 
meaning you have to actively choose to enable it. They're also claiming that all image analysis happens locally on your device. The photos aren't uploaded to Meta's servers unless you actually decide to edit or post them. So theoretically, the AI looks through your camera roll on your phone, picks out interesting photos, shows you suggestions, and only if you tap share does anything leave your device. Early testers are reporting something surprising. The AI's recommendations are actually pretty accurate. It's catching emotional moments, event-based images, and photos with good composition that users genuinely forgot about. One tester mentioned that Meta's AI surfaced a photo from a family gathering that perfectly captured a candid moment she would have never thought to share. That's the promise here. Your phone becomes less of a passive storage device and more of an active memory curator. But let's address the elephant in the room. Privacy advocates are raising serious concerns. Even if the feature is optional and processing happens locally, there's a broader question about what this opens the door to. If users get comfortable with AI scanning their personal photos, could that normalize more invasive photo-based personalization down the line? What happens when this technology gets better and starts inferring more than just, this is a birthday cake? What about photos you never wanted anyone to see, even an AI? Meta maintains that all processing is secure and that this is purely a convenience feature, not surveillance. They're positioning it as a way to help people share more moments with friends and family, reducing the friction between I should post that and actually posting it. But in an era where every tech company is trying to understand us better to serve us better ads, it's fair to question where the line is. The real test will be adoption. Will users find enough value in AI-curated photo suggestions to grant access to their camera roll? Or will privacy concerns keep this feature niche? Either way, it's another example of AI moving from abstract tools to intimate aspects of our digital lives. Beyond headlines. Quick hits that matter. All right, let's rapid fire through three more stories that you need to know about, because they're all shaping how AI and society are colliding right now. GPT-5's math drama. First up, the GPT-5 math drama. So OpenAI employees got really excited and claimed that GPT-5 had solved 10 famous Erdos problems, which are legendary unsolved math challenges that have stumped mathematicians for decades. The AI community lost its mind. This would have been a massive breakthrough. Except, here's the problem. Users on X started digging and discovered something awkward. The solutions weren't original. They were lifted from obscure research papers already published online. OpenAI employees quickly deleted their posts and retracted their statements, but the damage was done. This incident highlights something really important about the current state of AI. Large language models are incredible at pattern recognition and information retrieval. They can find connections in vast amounts of data faster than any human. But that's different from true problem solving and original mathematical reasoning. GPT-5 didn't solve these problems. It found where other people had already solved them and presented those solutions as if they were new. The line between powerful search and actual innovation is still very much real. And this was a reminder that we need to be careful about overhyping what these models can actually do. OpenAI teams with Hollywood. Next, deepfakes are getting serious attention from serious people. OpenAI is now actively partnering with Hollywood to combat unauthorized AI-generated celebrity videos. This kicked off after deepfakes featuring Brian Cranston from Breaking Bad went viral on Sora, OpenAI's video generation platform. Now they're working directly with Cranston, SAG-AFTRA, and major talent agencies like CAA and UTA to strengthen protections against synthetic media misuse. OpenAI has expanded Sora's opt-out system, which means creators and estates, including those representing figures like Martin Luther King Jr. and Robin Williams, can now control how their digital likenesses are used. This is a huge development because up until now, the technology has been moving faster than the protections. Anyone could theoretically generate a video of any public figure saying or doing anything. 
The legal and ethical framework is finally starting to catch up with the technology and having the major players at the table, Hollywood, tech companies, unions, means we might actually see enforceable standards emerge. Channel 4's AI news anchor, and finally, something that's equal parts fascinating and unsettling. Channel 4 in the UK debuted a show called Will AI Take My Job? with an entirely AI-generated news anchor. Not a human with AI enhancement, not deepfake overlays, a fully synthetic host created entirely by AI. This marks a first for mainstream British television, and it's part of a larger trend we're seeing. Virtual creators are gaining real traction. Influencers like Varun Maya have amassed millions of followers using AI video replicas of themselves. These aren't animated avatars. They look, sound, and move like real people because they're trained on real people. The technology is now good enough that audiences don't immediately reject them as uncanny or fake. They're watching, subscribing, and engaging. The experiment raises all the questions you'd expect. What happens to broadcast jobs when you can generate a perfect host who never gets tired, never makes mistakes, and can be infinitely replicated? What are the creative possibilities when you're not limited by human schedules, locations, or even mortality? And ethically, where's the line between using AI as a tool and replacing human creativity entirely? Channel 4 is forcing that conversation into the mainstream, and based on audience reaction, people are more curious than outraged, which might be the most telling thing of all. So that's your AI news breakdown for this week. From browsers that think to coding assistants that work in the cloud, from medical AI hitting unicorn status to meta-scanning your photos, it's clear that AI isn't just advancing in labs anymore. It's actively reshaping the tools we use, the media we consume, and even the jobs we thought were irreplaceable. The question isn't whether AI is coming for your workflow. It's already here. The question is how you're going to adapt, use these tools, and stay ahead of the curve. If any of these stories got you thinking, or if there's something you want me to dive deeper on, drop a comment below. I read every single one. And if you found this valuable, hit that like button so more people can stay informed. Next week, I'll be covering more groundbreaking developments. And trust me, the pace is only accelerating. See you in the next one. See you.